right, people. I guess that's the proper thing. Do you guys identify as people? Or what do you identify as? Maybe aliens? I wonder if aliens watch my channel. I don't know. If they do, hey, Mr. Alien Dude, subscribe. <laughs> Either way, good morning. We are up trying to get our marbles all collected. I ain't going to try to get our squirrels all in one place. But I wanted to say the last video really got screwed up. Um, and there ain't nothing I can do about it. Because the opening, somehow or another, either pretty much the opening didn't save whenever I recorded it. And I've had that issue a few times with my phone recording recording different things, but that's the first time I ever had an opening not go through or save. But it's okay. <clears throat> it just messed up my video a lot. <laughs> but there there was a lot I did video I did yesterday and I ended up doing a lot of editing because Without the opening, a lot of it just seemed so far out of context that I ended up throwing it, throwing it out. So it, it's fine. It's fine. We'll we'll get through this. I promise you. But I am going to tell you what the context was supposed to be of the video. Uh, in the comments on one of my shorts, I was. In the video, I was in the middle lane, in three lanes of traffic. I was in the middle lane, uh, passing, or just got done passing somebody, and I was coming up to a busy on ramp, so I was just staying in the middle lane. Comment goes, well, you know, I just put it, put it somewhere in here, or you can see it, but it says I should be in the right lane. And I don't know why this myth is even a thing. There, there's some people that I call them road rage drivers because if they see a truck anywhere but in the right lane, it don't matter if you're running 132 mile an hour, passing everything but the truck stop, they're gonna get upset because you're not in the right lane. But I just want to throw this, and the reason why I call them road rage drivers, because they'll pass you, flipping you off, pointing you to move over, everything else, and then whenever they get in front of you, you move over, and they'll get in the right lane, and they'll slow down, and they'll go under the speed limit. And you pass them, again, then all of a sudden they come down force, and they get to do their old you know, gang signs and everything else, whatever. But for whatever reason, people believe trucks aren't allowed out of the right lane. Or they shouldn't be out of the right lane. But here's the thing. A lot of the vehicles I pass on the road are cars and pickup trucks. I pass a lot of semi-trucks. My truck, old fireball here, will do the speed limit in every state. Now granted, I can't speed in the 85 mile an hour speed limit down in Texas. But I can do the speed limit. Snowball? Yes. Snowball was a runner. Didn't have a lot of power, but it was a runner. Don't ask me how I know or how fast it would go, but it would run. Uh, so, with the, I'll, I'll throw this out there. Snowball could outrun a lot of these covering vehicles out on the road. I'll put that out there. Most of you don't know your cars and trucks do have a governor on them. But uh, the context in some of the clips you might have seen, I was talk, making jokes about being in the left lane. That's that's kind of what it was, it was. It was about. But here's the thing: some states do have laws 
that trucks aren't supposed to be in the left lane unless they're passing or turning. That is true. But there, as far as I know, unless there is like a special section of road, for whatever reason, I have been in sections of roads where they do have signs that says trucks must be in right lane or trucks must be in left lane. And it's safety reasons. Um, but as far as statewide, I haven't been in any state that will that has a law saying all trucks must remain in right lane or else be shot. No, that doesn't exist. We're allowed to pass. We're allowed to move over to make turns. Simple as that. Uh, and ultimately, we have to make safe decisions. Uh, when it comes to on ramps, it is not a law that a truck has to move over, or vehicles have to move over for you to get get onto the highway. They don't have to speed up or slow down, adjust their speed. The law states if you're merging into traffic, you are supposed to yield or adjust your speed to merge in. Uh, so, typically if I can move over, I move over. I normally don't speed up or slow down if I don't have to. Uh, you know, it all comes down to a judgment call. I'm not gonna put myself in a position to uh, to cause a scene, more or less. I don't, I don't want to deal with it. You know, there's too much, you know, if you, somebody brake checks you, there's too much legalities there. I do run a dash camera, uh, things like that, but I see a lot of videos where incidents could have been avoided. Just, you know, swallow your pride and get on down the road. You know, those type of deals. So I'm not saying I'm bullheaded and I'm not going to give in any, but if I can, I move over, and that's part of the situation. I was in the middle lane to try to avoid a possible road rage incident or somebody just running into my truck. Because I don't want to do the paperwork. I don't want to sit on the side of the road wasting my day, waiting on a cop, waiting on tow trucks, waiting on this and that. So, I know this is a long opening, but let's go ahead and get to doing some trucking which I really don't know what we're going to do yet today because it is almost 7 o'clock in the morning and I haven't got a phone call yet on on a load. So we're probably going to get ready to go deliver here in a minute and wait to see if we can get a load. Look things over. Clean my windows and mirrors. We uh, still kind of raining right now. It'd be a waste of time. We are. You see, we're at the Dairy Queen here in Saint Genevieve. A lot of trucks parked here tonight. They're parked overnight. Uh, I pulled in. There's actually three in a lot. Got. An oversized there, there was a reaper there, and another truck came out already. Some of these guys showed up while I was in bed, which is fine. I mean, they got the parking here, might as well use it, but signs all over says parking for customers only. So, kind of, I guess as long as they don't trash the place, who cares? But you know, at the same time, it's I don't know. I can tell you, this this old boy here's got Massey Ferguson's on. There's a Massey Ferguson dealer just right up the road. I don't know where that old boy be going. I don't know. As long as they don't trash it, I guess. No harm, no no foul, no harm, or there's no harm, no foul. Big thing is. I'm trying not to make this a gripe session, but the big thing is with places like this that do have parking, this parking lot is more for buses than it is trucks. I will say that, but there is a lot of truck traffic. I mean, as far back as I can remember, they've always had parking here. I 
mean, I mean, I've been coming over here since I was a little bitty guy, a little lad. But there's a lot of truck traffic through here, and it'd be stupid to run trucks off, honestly. But at the same time, it's not really a truck parking lot. It's more of a, like I said, a bus. But they, uh, problem that typically happens is places like this will get rid of, won't allow overnight truck parking because, you know, the parking lot will become overcrowded. Guys will start running into each other. Or you get the idiots that throw their pee bottles out, go out and take a dump in the parking lot. Take a crap for those who don't know what a dump is. But that, a lot of truckers complain, Walmart don't let us park there no more. Walmart won't let, they ran us off. They're booting our trucks. They're, and they're putting signs up, no truck parking, blah, blah, blah. Simple. Leave no trace. I mean, it, it ain't that hard. Don't trash these places. I'm sorry, but if you... I understand. Sometimes you gotta go. But don't leave it in somebody's parking lot. Simple as that. But... It's, like I said, most of these guys probably leave here shortly anyway. I don't I don't know when that guy showed up, but I'm sure he's just going up the road to the Massey Ferguson dealer with one of those tractors. That old boy there is probably, there's no telling. He's probably just stopped here for the night. He ought to be getting rolling here shortly. Hey, I don't care if you're in a truck, RV, car, whatever. Don't throw your trash out on the ground. Clean up after yourself. Be respectful of other people's properties. It's pretty simple. Like I said, leave no trace. I don't have a load yet, but yeah, we're gonna go ahead and head over to the quarry to get unloaded because kind of at the point most of the time I got to drive at least two hours to our reloads and honestly if I don't get going here soon then it kind of screws me for the uh, for the day on how on getting reloaded and getting somewhere for the day so we're gonna head down and get up get unloaded and hopefully we get something going today here oh, a fiasco. last video you know not only was i missing some of the clips out of it but ended up getting a copyright claim on it because i was singing along with you know some zz top nothing out of the ordinary but i got a copyright claim on it too so i'm uh, hopefully getting that lined out too you know not a big deal but hopefully get it lined out because i don't really like that but there you go yeah let's play guess the weight we're at a half tank of fuel just under half tank i am gonna go with 70 i've been going with 78. i'm gonna go with the 78 000 pound range just because it sounds good. I don't think I should be heavier than that. Wouldn't expect it. Let's see, we're getting up on here. Brakes get to touching. Get on here, I think so. Let's see here. Oh! 79, 360. There you go. Up some real estate here for a little while. Better with that clutch. Heck yeah. 
It is so touchy. Touchy, touchy, touchy. It's like a Hollywood actress. When somebody goes against the grain. Just Hollywood people is the most powerful peoples in the world. <laughs> oh, man. We'll get, we'll hang out here for a short bit. And I guess if nothing comes up, we will head home. The only other thing to do at this point. Everybody else is kind of, I don't know if I'm crooked or everybody else is crooked. Or politicians. I don't know, we'll, we'll get something figured out here. Either we go home or we get a load. One or the other. Well, we're about midway through the day now. I don't know, 11.30ish or so. So I went in and wandered in there. It's my favorite day. They got bacon wrapped sauerkraut brats. Inside the bacon is sauerkraut. These things are bomb. Mm. <laughs> Wednesdays are my favorite here at Southbound Fuels because this is the special. They got pork loin too, but Everybody's got pork loin. I know, Mama. Don't don't talk with food in your mouth, but these things are so good. I love them. Usually, I don't. I'm here too early in the morning to get them. So I finally got one. My other option is wait couple days when I come back through on Fridays and get them after they've been sitting in the cooler for a couple days and microwave them. Now that's good then by getting them fresh. Dang Well, we're going to have to lock in the differential to get out of our spot here. Got a power divider I should say. Alright. Kind of like four wheel drive for me. But Looks like the verdict is in. We're going home. <laughs> they, uh, nothing has come across yet for us to go pick up today or tomorrow. And we have already booked on a load for Monday. Uh, one of our main one of our main customers needs us to run a load to Kansas City so uh, and uh, so we uh, we're gonna run to Kansas City on Monday for sure but we don't know that we'll be able to run anything else this week with the way it's kind of one of those, I have to run the load, I can't, uh, Billy or Richard can't cover it, so Billy's, Billy's going to be down for a couple weeks, so I'm going to be running more of uh, the stuff from that one customer, so we're going to work our way home, I guess, only got an hour to get there, so we'll do our best. Looks like the time has come to start winterizing the, the truck. The old man made a call today. It's supposed to start getting cold this weekend, so he uh, made the call. Called me and told me, go ahead and start putting some additive in when you get home. I need to wash my hands. But, oh well. He said, go ahead and put a bottle of power service in each tank. Um, this is pretty well all we run anymore. It used to be really big on the house, but I don't know. The year he bought this truck, he was on his way up to Chicago, and well, daggum fireball jailed up going down the road. So, and he was using 
house at that time. So he naturally gets up underneath the bunk where it should be warm. And every bottle of house he had in the bunk was frozen. So he switched over to power service and hadn't had any issues. Spilled about half of it. That's normal. Takes me about all winter to figure out how to hit this tank. So that went last year. But uh, switch over to power service. We use my initial treatment. I'm gonna put a bottle on each side, get it started servicing, and then I usually do about half half a bottle on each side from there on. But uh, we don't use Hells no more at all. I think I still got a bottle at home that I haven't used. Crazy part is, is that he was the year that he gelled up with the fireball. Granted, it was extremely cold. I actually had my chains frozen on. I had steel pylons going up to. Uh, I was just outside Toledo with that load, but um, it was like negative 15 for a high or something up north. But uh. Yeah, that year, he he pretty religiously keeps up on putting house and stuff in the truck. Mainly when it gets cold. When he knows it's going to get real cold, he'll start putting it in a week or two beforehand. But, uh, that year, I, even with it being as cold as it was, I think I put... I don't even think I had any house with me, to tell you the truth. I think I had some for, for an emergency and uh i never had a problem i don't know if it's because of the engine i was running put out more heat or i, I really don't know why but for a reason his this one gelled up at the fuel filter into the store he was there i'm at a half tank anyway so with being with being low well not low on fuel but a half tank of fuel this ought to make it in good with what's in there. And whenever I go to add more in there or add more fuel, it ought to be mixed in. Uh, some of the places we go don't winterize our fuel. And that might have been why he gelled up and I didn't. Because at that point, I was running, I was running a lot up to the to the northeast and Ohio, northern Ohio and stuff like that and uh, so I was buying a lot more winter mixed fuel I guess is what they call it it's already got additive in it but he was staying more midwest you know regional like like we do now but I think it was fueling a lot in Kansas so I don't think it was treated as much over there but we got to get our stuff out of the truck. I got to wash my bed clothes. Hadn't washed them in a while, so we need to get all of our laundry out. And I guess we're going to hit to the house, and it ain't looking good for hauling freight this week. Not at all. So I guess until the next one, the cowboy rides away. God bless y'all. Stay out of trouble.